Montag just keeps on giving. By now everybody should be aware of Montag. That's the company that went from look at this super affordable ready to go case featuring your biggest nightmare all the way to we do premium shit now. And the thing with Montag is if they want to do something right, they will do something right. But does that also apply to the AIOs? This is the new Montag Hyperflow ARGB360, Montag's first attempt of breaking into the all-in-one liquid cooler market. There are two color versions available for this, black and white. And from there we have this thing in 360 and 240 millimeters. And for this video, we will solely focus on the 360 millimeter version, but rest assured that that the 240mm video is coming, like in a few days. Montek's first AIO comes in a pretty standard packaging, featuring some images, the usual half-baked PR sentence, and some specs. Inside we'll find the AIO itself pre-assembled to a degree that makes me happy, and a big bag of mounting hardware. In case you're looking for the manual, it is there, but for all of my Montek AIOs, it landed underneath this piece of carton that keeps everything in place, so if you're looking for yours, there it is. In the before-mentioned bag of hardware, we will find all the necessary installation material for all nowadays relevant sockets. And as I just said, the AIO comes pre-assembled, so to get it going, all you need to do is essentially mount it down. For Intel on LGA1700, we need to position the appropriate backplate behind the motherboard and screw it down using the double-sided LGA1700 screws. And yes, I am aware that for some reason, everybody and everybody's dog has switched to this mounting mechanic. I don't know why every AIO I got in like the last three, four months uses just this. It just seems like everybody has the same supplier. Anyway, Montag has switched things up. Instead of having a impossible to screw down round screw, this thing has edges. And including in the bag of goodies, we got this thing. And we can use it to mount and unmount the screw, which is a great job Montag. And from there, we don't even need to use thermal paste cause it's already pre-applied. Press the sucker onto the chip and screw it down using the thumb screws. Over on AMD, it's a bit different. First, we need to remove the retention bracket from the water block pump combo cause there is an Intel one on there by default. So slide that one out and slide the AMD one on there with the hooks pointing upwards. And from there, we can use the old school AMD hooks by pre-attaching them onto the pump and then attach everything to the original AMD retention brackets. Before I continue, I wanted to mention a few things about installation. I don't really care that everybody is using the same mounting mechanic. As, as long as it works fine, I, I don't really care. But what I do care about is the little twist that the Montec model has. Believe me, the fact that you can effortlessly remove and install that one screw, that's a life savior. But Montec's packaging could be better. I like that there's thermal paste pre-applied and I love the fact that they they still include more thermal paste as well as some like application sheets and a spatula. All of that is great, but this cover that protects the base and the thermal paste is, yeah, it is attached by hopes and dreams. So what happens quite often actually, cause like I have four AIOs and all four of them did it. What happens is if you try to remove everything from this plastic bag that it comes in like wrapped, if you just pull on it like an idiot, you will pull off the protective piece and, and then you will, yeah, touch the thermal paste and like it will be all over the place. So for you out there, be gentle and remove the bag slowly and for Montag, for the next batch, just, just make the thing tighter. But let's finally talk a bit about the AIO. We got a 27 mm thick 20 FPI radiator, so standard thickness and slightly on the denser side, with a bit of Montec branding on top. And going out of the red, we got 400 mm long, relatively high quality feeling tubes, which are reinforced on both ends and adjustable at the water block end. Overall, the tubes feel great and they do kind of look great, but it's way too short. For 360mm AIOs especially, 450 should be minimum once you got a, a third fan. Speaking of which, these are Montex yet unreleased Metal 12 Pro ARGB fans. And I'm saying unreleased because I, I believe wholeheartedly that they will be released as a product in like a few weeks. Anyway, these are supposed to be the Pro version of Montex previously released Metal fan. And I do hope that they are the premium version because the last one was like a little bit 
bad. These are spinning at up to 2100 rpm and push out up to 76.2 CFM at up to 3.81 mm of H2O. So spec wise, they are to some degree well optimized for radiator usage. In the center, we got a gigantic metal Montag badge and the corners are rubberized as hell to remove any excess vibrations. The fan blade design is interesting to say the least. We got nine wings and all of them got these airflow channels on them which it looks kind of cool once they spin. You, you will see the grooves are still visible and I don't know, I, I think it looks kind of cool. But the most important point about them, they are 28 millimeter thick. Well, it's actually more like 27 and a half once you ignore the rubber, but they are in fact slightly thicker than your average fan. Which also explains why these fan blades look so big to me. Build-wise, they feel perfectly fine. The central hub may or may not be like gigantic, but that that can have its reasons. And the only thing I found that might end up making things worse is the fact that the last fan will not fully cover the end of the radiator. So you will have some degree of spillback that could happen here and could have been avoided. Other than that, we got ARGB. From the center of the fan, we got some illumination going, which is strong enough to make it all the way through. So if you like it, that's fine. And to connect the fan, Montek decided to go the proprietary route. All of the fans got that whatever the hell this is, 7-pin connector. But as everything is pre-assembled out of the box, the adapter back to regular 3-pin ARGB and 4-pin PWM is already on there by default, so it's really fine to me. Coming to the heart of the AIO, this big ass ARGB plate. Unsurprisingly, this whole thing just lights up. Whether you like it or not, that will be up to you, but get ready for as much ARGB as Montag was able to cram into here, including two black or white edges. Below all of that rainbow cancer, we got a PWM controlled 3100 RPM pump and a 55.7x55.7 .55 copper base. And with all of that said, buckle up for the performance section cause that one was kind of a surprise. We test all of our coolers on top of a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. For AIOs, we forced the pump to spin at 100% all the time and as we benchmark each preset, we slowly reduce the fan speed while taking note of the noise to later create noise to performance graph. At 120 watts, which would be the closest to your average gaming session, the Montec Hyperflow 360 already started to show that this thing is everything but a first failed attempt. At 28.6 degrees C above ambient, it is in the group of very good coolers, right next to the Liquid Freezer 3 for 20 or Iceflow Oasis. Oh, and by the way, we got quite some comments over the last months or years that people found our old blue graphs harder to read the more coolers we added. So I figured out how to create rainbows in Excel. So uh, yeah, is this better? Anyway, what if noise is involved? Over on the noise to performance graph for 120 watts, it remained roughly in the same position. I specifically added the Geometric Future 360 mil AIO so that you can see that real differences are possible. However, for everything on the right side, at 120 watts at least, the differences are quite small or sometimes just a fraction of a degree. So for 120, it is not the absolute best I have seen so far, but it is definitely in the, the upper range group. But that was only 120, and this is a 360 mil AIO, so let's get to 250 watts. When pushing more heat through the system, the new Montec AIO became better. At 54.4 degrees C above ambient, the Hyperflow 360 is now at the very top of the list, and even outperforming that random ASA AIO, which performed unnaturally good. On the corresponding noise to performance graph, we can see that the Hyperflow 360 can handle that load without any issue. Something that can't be said about the older Silent Loop 2, which started to fall behind. So if we now compare the Hyperflow to things like the EK Nucleus, the LF3420 or the Thermal Iceberg AIO, it is slightly behind in both noise and temperature, yes, but it is keeping up with them, which not all AIOs can do. This brings us to 320 watts, where we allow the CPU to reach 110 degrees before we just stop the test. And at 74.7 degrees C above ambient, the hyperflow performed precisely like our LF3420 did, which is just goddamn impressive. It is not the best regular 360 mil AIO though. The ASA, EK, iSpec Thermal ones are still ahead, 
not a lot at, at this point, but they are still ahead. And when slowly lowering the fan speed, the gaps to the absolute best contestants might have become bigger, but at least it kept going, creating a long noise to performance line, which ended up almost identical to the LF3 or EKAO once the fan speed was below 80%. Performance overall, it is very, very good. At least on Intel, we test everything on a 3900K, AMD might be different, but for Intel, it's very, very good. It is not a chart topper, but it is in the group of very good AIOs. And for a first attempt, I can say Montec nailed it. Quality-wise, that's top-notch. Design, that will be up to you. Installation procedure is for once enjoyable all the way through. And that removal process, thanks Montec for actually thinking. And performance is top. But what about the price? I do not know about Europe right now, but on Amazon US, that thing will go for 95 bucks. And if I compare that to all the other AOs that Amazon is recommending me here, that's a very good price. Generally, there were only two things that annoyed me in my time with all of the new Montag AOs. One was the fact that this cap fell off all the time, which was just annoying. But uh, the only actual issue is tube length. I believe 450 should be minimum here. And if that's everything, then I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> on a side note, out of all of the AIOs I have tested, so everything I have ever had on the channel, the 360ml version of the Montec one is incredibly quick in settling the water temperature. When you benchmark AIOs, you usually need to wait like 10, 15, 20 minutes for the temperature to settle. And you can see that because the package temperature goes up by like a fraction every few seconds. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and that keeps on giving until everything settled down. For air coolers, that happens too, but it is way, way quicker. But on here, here it was like, it was more like an air cooler. Start the benchmark, wait two minutes, done. Nothing changes. And I waited every time 20 minutes, but the, the numbers just didn't change. And the only way I can explain this to myself is that the cold plate is like really, really awesome. That would explain it, but I, I don't know. It's, it's just interesting. So from our side, absolute recommendation. Actually, no matter the chip, 3900K, this should be fine. 7950X, this should be fine. Everything should work just fine with this. Montec did really do a great job here, and I hope that this was only the beginning. But okay, this should be everything for the all new Montec Hyperflow ARGB in 360. And at this point, a huge thank you to Montec for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to create little caps for that pump water block combo. How cool would that be? Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the insane Silverstone AIO. That thing was just awesome. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.